already eighth grade, you don't get a textbook today because we're just going to be doing a more advanced version of elimination than we did last week. What makes it more advanced? The ones we're gonna do today are gonna require a pregame step. Now, if you remember, this was also the case when we learned graphing, solving by graphing. Sometimes we were ready to graph and solve. Other times we had to work the equation to get it ready to graph. We had the pregame first. The same was true, if you recall, with substitution. When we first learned substitution, some systems we were ready to substitute right out of the gate and we jumped right into substituting and solving and then we learned more advanced systems where we had to get the system ready to substitute by solving for one of the variables. The same progression is gonna happen here with elimination. Last week, I showed you equations that were ready to have a variable eliminated. And what made them ready, if you recall from last week, if you were listening carefully in the video and following through, is that one of the variables, didn't matter which one, either X or Y, had the same coefficient in front, had the same number in front. So like in front of both X's, you had a two and a two, or maybe there was a two and a negative two. It didn't matter if it was positive or negative, because we could eliminate either way, adding or subtracting. It had to have the same number in front of the variable. As you can see here with the first one we're gonna look at today, that is not the case. What do we have in front of the X's? Four, three, not the same. So then we look at the Y's. What's in front of the Y's? A two and a six, not the same. So we have to pre-game this system to get it ready to eliminate. The easiest way here is if you can turn one of the coefficients into the other. Now, can I turn a three into a four by multiplying? No, I can't. If I multiply three by one, I get three. If I multiply three by two, I get six. I'm too big. I can't turn a three into a four. And obviously I can't turn a four into a three, but over here, check out the Y's. Can I turn a two into a six by multiplying? Yeah, if I multiply two by three, what's two times three? You get six. So that's the pregame step we have to do here. We have to multiply this entire top equation by three. And the reason why we're multiplying it by three is because three times two is gonna give us six. And then we will be able to eliminate. Now it's gonna be a negative six, but that doesn't matter. So obviously we have to distribute because the entire equation has to multiply by three. So three times four X is gonna give me 12 X. Three times negative two Y is gonna give me negative six Y. Don't forget three times seven, 21. Now, I like to take a little squiggly through this one because now that one is gone. We are no longer using that equation. We are now using the new version of that equation up here. And we are gonna use it to eliminate the Y's because a negative six and a positive six can eliminate by adding. So now we add these two equations together. 12x plus 3x is gonna give me 15x. And I can write it right here because I know the y's are eliminating. Negative six plus six is zero y's. The y's have eliminated, eliminated, eliminated. 21 plus nine is 30. Divide both sides by the 15 and you get x equals two. Plug it back into either one of these. I'll just take the three x plus six y equals nine because everything's positive. Take our two, put it right there because it's x. So three times two plus six y equals nine. Six plus six y equals nine. Subtract the six. 6y equals three, divide by the six, and we get a fraction here, we get a one half, but that's okay. Final answer, two comma one half. Now make sure you watch this again, pause it at certain times, make sure you know why I'm doing what I'm doing, or maybe pause it prior to the next step and ask yourself, what's he gonna do next? See if you get it right. This is a different kind of learning. It's definitely gotta be a little bit more self-guided on your part. Next one, can I turn a three into a five? Nope, five into a three, nope. But I can turn this two into a four just by multiplying it by two. Two times two will give me four. I'll have a couple of fours, I'll be able to eliminate. So this time we are multiplying this entire bottom equation by a two. Why are we multiplying by two? Because two times two is gonna give me four, the same as that and I'll be able to eliminate. Distribute, two times five X is 10 X, two times negative two Y is negative four Y, and two times seven is 14. 
cross that guy out because now we're not using that anymore. We're new using this new version. Different signs we're going to add to eliminate. 3x plus 10x is 13x. 4 plus negative 4 is gone, gone, gone. Negative 1 plus 14 is 13. And look how pretty this is. x equals 1. Choose one of these guys up here. I'll just take the 3x plus 4y equaling negative 1. I will take my 1 and put it in for x. 3 times 1 plus 4y equals negative 1. 3 plus 4y equals negative 1. Subtract the 3. 4y equals negative 4. Divide by the 4. And y equals negative 1. Final answer here, 1 comma negative 1. So there you go. Last one we're going to look at together here. So this system is interesting because you've got two options here. Two. You can eliminate the x by multiplying the top equation by 5. Because if I multiply this top equation by 5, won't I get a negative 5x, which I could then eliminate with this 5x? 5 and 5 can eliminate? Yes, so that's option 1. Option 2 is, just like the previous problem, I could multiply this bottom equation by 2, because that would give me 4y, which I could eliminate with that 4y. Or well, it's actually a negative 4y. So you actually have two options here. They are both equally okay. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Since the previous two problems I've eliminated y, I'm gonna switch it up this time, and I'm gonna choose to eliminate x. Again, it doesn't matter. You could go either way here, but I'm gonna eliminate x. So I'm gonna multiply this entire top equation by five. So five times negative x is negative five x. Five times negative four y is negative 20 y. And five times one is five. And now that's gone. I've got my new version up there. Negative and a positive will eliminate by adding. So all three of the ones we did today, we eliminated by adding. When would we have a subtraction here is if these had the same sign. We saw one or two of those last week, but all three today, we happened to have different signs. So all three today, the elimination happened by adding, but you need to know we don't always add here. Sometimes we will subtract. If this was a positive 5x and this is a positive 5x, then we subtract because five minus five would go away, not five plus five, that would give me 10. But because they're different signs, that was that little note I had over here yesterday, if you remember, okay? So there you go. Add the X's, they eliminate. Negative 20 plus two is gonna be a negative 18 Y. Five plus 13 is 18. Divide by the negative 18 and Y equals negative one. So now let's choose the 5X plus 2Y equals 13 equation. It doesn't matter. We're going to plug negative one in for a Y because it's the Y this time we solved for. 5X plus 2 times negative one equals 13. 5X minus 2 equals 13. Add the 2 over. 5X equals 15. Divide by 5. X equals Three. Final answer, three comma negative one. Alrighty, so there's three good ones for you where we had to pre-game the equations. Look for your uh, guided notes, although the guided notes, uh, pardon me, no. There are gonna be no guided notes with this one. It's gonna be the same as last week's notes. Um, so just look for the, I'll give you probably two of these to do uh, on your own for the work this week. Let me zoom out here. Peace out, later.